name's Tracy Gaudry and I'm a member of the Management Committee of the UCI and I'm the President of the UCI Women's Commission. As a member of the Management Committee of the UCI, we look around the world at uh, locations, you know, topography, terrain, countryside, safety, the interest in the local community and Victoria has got so many of those ingredients and the State Government of Victoria demonstrated that they were committed to cycling, not just at the elite level, but in the grassroots level. The Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race is the biggest one-day race outside of Europe and has become the new stapled favourite at the start of the road cycling season. Now both a male and female UCI World Tour race, InCycle travelled along the route in Victoria, Australia to see why its home is a perfect place for a ride. Our first stop is the start and finish of the race route, the city of Geelong. I was several decades ago uh, a budding young cyclist brought up in Geelong and Geelong was the, the training ground for the development of my, what became a professional cycling career. I'm a bicycle frame manufacturer from Geelong. I've been doing it for around about 44 years. We used to do the ride on the Saturday before Cadell's race, we'd call it old school Saturday, and we'd all get out on the old school bikes. And I remember um, we got mixed up in the group that were doing the longer ride. The, Matt White was up there and he says, I don't know what's going on here. There's Eddie Merck's bikes, steel bikes, Francesco Moser's steel bikes, there's steel bikes everywhere. He, yeah, he couldn't believe it. There's several well-known cyclists that live around Geelong. Yeah, it's got a really rich history in cycling. Phil Anderson, he was the first uh, Aussie to wear the yellow jersey for the Tour de France. Cadell Evans, he's down in Barwon Heads. We started Fuel in 2010 and it was sort of a mix of running my own business and uh, obviously a passion for cycling. A little bit of a man cave with a coffee machine as a bonus. I think the location that we have close to the, the Melbourne uh, main city, let alone the Great Ocean Road, um, it's such a great pivotal location that is easy access. Uh, nationally, internationally, and um, a good mix of scenery and um, climate. For those who have uh, been a spectator or watched on television the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Ride, there is uh, a steep, short hill called Shalambra Crescent. But as an athlete at the peak of their game, it's one of those challenging climbs that if you're in form, you're going to do a lot of damage. It just gets steeper and steeper and steeper. The average gradient of 9.6%, but look at that maximum gradient, 22%. And when you're riding up it, you're literally just looking straight up into the sky as you approach the top of the climb. Chalambra, that's quite a um, challenge for the local cyclists. Everybody has their, um, their garments and Strava and all that sort of thing and they can look and see who's doing it and then bang, they're trying to beat them. The camera does do it justice. It's like a wall. Yeah, it's a testing, testing climb um, that is within access of anyone to do at any time of the day, which is being a public road, you know, most other days of the year, it's, it's open to uh, options. Next, we move east to Bellarine, just off the race route. Known for its wine, but still a very popular area with cyclists. Uh, Jack Rabbit, as it is, was uh, formed in 2010 when David and Lindsay Sharp bought the property off our neighbours. We've got a really nice, uh, relaxed, uh, fine dining restaurant here, and we also have a very casual cafe. weekends and over the summer the roads are clogged with, um, <laughs> with lots of cycling groups. 
Uh, they come up here in all their cycling gear, and yeah, it's just it's really good. It's a, it's a good feel for the place, and it's a good look. For our third stop, we head back to the World Tour course, stopping in Surf City, Torquay. Torquay is the ultimate outdoor lifestyle. You're either surfing at the surf beach, hanging out on the family beaches, um, wandering around very, very open streets. So bike riders love being in Torquay. My name is Craig Baird. I'm the curator here at the Australian National Surfing Museum. The Bells event is the longest continuously running surfing event uh, anywhere in the world. Added to that is the uh, Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race and um, it's yet another sporting event that's run, run here that's on, an, on a, a significant level. The Shire has a, has a focus on events and obviously basing them in an area that's, that's both famous and picturesque means that uh, it'll capture people's imaginations. Further down the coast, we travelled to Bells Beach, home of the Bells Beach Rip Curl Pro Surfing Competition and popular too with budding cyclists. Yeah, around here we've got lots of hills. Yeah, we've also got lots of nice flats around the ocean and out in the forest as well. Out in the Golden Plains is quite different as well. I think we're doing one of the favourite routes, yeah. Going here, straight to the beach, and then uh, go back through the hills, and the forest, forest road, and then back to Moriac and through the hills. Yeah, the Great Ocean Road Race. It's a good route, yeah. Further along the Great Ocean Road, we divert from the race route again to the picturesque town of Lawn. Movida is an uh, iconic Melbourne restaurant. Uh, it's modern Australian interpretation of Spanish food with uh, an accent on fresh local seasonal produce. Things like the cycling and the pier to pub, which brings people down, brings a whole different crowd up here. Um, a lot of family focus, which is amazing. Uh, and then gives people who maybe hadn't had an opportunity to be exposed to Movida before, a chance to enjoy the experience here with us. There's a generally uh, quite a young population down here in Lawn, and there's so much environment to explore here. Um, hiking up into the Otways, up through to Erskine Falls and the waterfalls. Um, there's just so much to do here. It's amazing. Our final stop is back in Geelong, where the local community, businesses and cycling enthusiasts reap the benefit of the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race legacy throughout the year. Having the Cadell race on, uh, definitely see a lot more people coming in to the area and exploring, uh, getting to know Geelong, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, it's great. Victoria's a bit of a hub for cycling because there's Victoria, when you look at it, it's got so many fantastic pockets within the state uh, that would, I can see would really appeal to cyclists, um, like you've got up in the northeast, up in the high country there, beautiful vistas, the mountains, that sort of thing. Uh, then there's obviously the surf coast down here and on the other side of the bay. So yeah, there's, yeah, Victoria's got it in. For the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race to be um, re-awarded World Tour status for the men's race, and awarded world tour status for the women's race for the very first time means that the women's race will be the first ever women's world tour event in 2020 and for the first time putting female elite athletes on exactly the same pedestal as male elite athletes. There was nothing better than to go exploring the surf coast region, the Ballerine region, going down to Bowen Heads, down to Torquay, to Ocean Grove, and a little bit further afield to Lawn, for example, or even on a really big day down to Apollo Bay. When you think about that as a bike rider, it's almost like bike riding heaven. 
you know, you've got Great Ocean Road, you've got some of the world's best coastline. And you've also got friendly locals um, and lots of great cafes to boot to stop along the way. So there's a lot to be said for bike riding in the Geelong, Surf Coast and Ballerine regions.